Hello everybody and welcome back to another modern gameplay video. If you are new here, my name is Marin and we like to upload wacky modern gameplay every Monday and Friday and today we are playing a Timeless Dragon Smallpox deck that user YZA took to a 5-0 finish in MTGO Modern League. Now I haven't seen Timeless Dragon in any list before and then suddenly this week, this week's Modern League on MTGO, there was like two different lists that I saw running Timeless Dragon. So it's like people are finally realizing that this is a decent card. And yeah, this is one of the lists that I saw that had it. It had three copies. So I wanted to give this card a fair chance because I've never seen anything about it before. So let's get to it. Hope you enjoy. All right, welcome to the Dragon Pox deck tech. As usual, the deck list link is down below in the description if you'd like to follow along with it as we go through the list. So Smallpox is a very destructive card for both players at the table. So whenever you see a Smallpox list, they're usually trying to make Smallpox as less harmful on yourself as possible and affect the opponent more. One of the main things on Smallpox is that it makes you sacrifice a land. So to help prevent that, we run Flagstones of Trocare because when we sacrifice the Flagstones, we can just go fetch another planes. So the opponents can have to actually sack a real land and we just get to replace our Flagstones. And then the next thing about Smallpox that's really good is it makes your opponent discard a card. You have to discard a card as well. And that is why you run things like Lingering souls because you can flash that back and still get your value whether it's in your graveyard in your hand or whatever but now we have an additional thing to discard the smallpox that is really good and helps our plan of not hurting our mana base and that is timeless dragon so timeless dragon can plane cycle and then uh yeah you can go and get a planes if you end up not having a flagstones and you have to sack a land you're gonna hurt your mana base but you know the plane cycle on timeless dragon helps you hit your land drops but also it's discardable because when you discard it to smallpox you can then eternalize it from your graveyard and it's basically just a four mana four four flyer when it's in your graveyard so it's just another way of making the card smallpox more effective and doesn't hurt you as much so that is the main idea of the deck the rest of it's self-explanatory but as usual deck list link down below if you want to see the rest of it and with that we're going to get on to the gameplay but first a quick word for our supporters and before we get into it just a few quick plugs thank you so much to our patrons for making this channel possible their names have been scrolling on screen and if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And we now do Commander streams with our patrons every Tuesday. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below, and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And with that, let's get on to the video. Hope you enjoy. Got a game here against Dio Dice, who we've played against before. We won the die roll, gonna be on the play here with some black white dragon pox. That is going to be a mulligan. That one is going to be a keep. And uh, we gotta toss probably Kaya's Guile. All right, Flagstones go, and we'll just turn to Urborg into small pox and make them sack whatever they play. Please play a mana dork. Please make it worth my while. Or put a Utopia Sprawl in that land, come on. Come on. You know you want to. I feel like I said their name wrong. Is it really Dio Dice or is it like Deodis? Yo, Weldress, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Welcome. Apreesh. Oh no, the Grazer. That's gonna help them ramp. All right. Okay, at least I got something to discard now. That's what I wanted. Killed a bunch of their value. Because our Boil Grazer is kind of anti-value if you think about it. He's acceleration, but he's like, doesn't really give you anything. All right, Indotha, and go. Get rid of Urborg and a Ave proge Progenitor Ooze. This is interesting. I think I've, I've seen this deck before. Yeah, I think I've seen it in the lists in the leagues oh there's another oh do i go for another smallpox i think i just go lily and make them discard i think that's honestly the better thing to do because they only got two cards left let's discard kaya they discard another in search of greatness
burning tree into abundant growth into a land. All right. Can I get a land drop? Nope, but prismatic ending is decent. I can hit this utopia sprawl. And then I can smallpox. And this Liliana is just about to take over. There's like no way they're coming back from this. Empty board, they're on two mana, and I got a Liliana that's going to ult in two turns. Yeah, Mocha BZ, that I, I misplayed so hard. That was not a pretty game for either of us. Ooh, Timeless Dragon. Let's go ahead and plane cycle. Let's go get a basic planes and flashback lingering souls. Tick up and pass turn. So not only are we going to get a 4-4 dragon, but also make them sack another two lands. If they do play a land here. Yeah, super back and forth. That was super back and forth game. In Search of Dankness is pretty cool. It scries them at their upkeep. Old Growth Troll, which Liliana cannot really deal with that well. So let's just, uh, you can keep your lands. I'll make you sack that. Can chant a land with it. Timeless Dragon. It's a pretty quick clock. Dude, you're definitely going to see another Timeless Dragon Brew on the channel next week. Like, seriously, this card's been impressing me a lot. I'm going to have to brew with it again. And it might just be just simple black-white control because it pairs so well with Liliana and Collective Brutality. Oath of Nyssa fetches them a Scavenging Ooze, which is pretty good. Oh, they're going to eat my whole graveyard with that Scooz. They're eating their graveyard as well, just to gain some life. I'm just going to make them sack that with Liliana. They exile Prismatic Ending and Kaya. Ooh, Lockthwain. Perfect. And that's enough mana to allow me to play in Flashback Souls. Absolutely perfect. Go to combat, swing six, and you're go. Two turn clock. They're down to 12. My mana base looks so pretty right now. <laughs> and they scoop it up. All right, onto the board. All right, against uh, mono green devotion. Give us damping sphere. Mm. Seems a little bit too cute. I don't know how much we're worried about the Nykthos. Uh Punishments are not the worst thing in the world. If I do it for one, I could like kill an Arbor Elf and Utopia Sprawl. It's not a bad idea. 
Yeah, let's just let's just bring in those and cut. I don't know. Kaya's Gaia Gaia feels very filler, very fillery. You know what? Cling to dust is probably filler. All right, let's do it like that. Yeah, this seems fine. Oh, do we got the pox? Oh, we don't have the pox. I'm gonna keep it though. We do have the herb organ flagstones, which is what this deck always wants in every single opener. Inquisition. Oh, do they bring in uh, the the instant, the one green instant Vela Summer? Oh no, they just curved a command it on turn one. Oh, but I drew a smallpox. Perfect. Please play a mana dork. Play like a voyaging satyr. Uh, our boreal grazer again. Nykthos and Wooded Foothills. All right, flagstones, smallpox, and we will discard our dragon. Actually, I think I'm going to discard Fatal Push. I think I want to save my dragon to plane cycle because I, I actually do need to hit my lands. Oh, I even got a Vindicate. All right, I'm discarding Push. Vindicate's great. I can hit another land with that. Let's go get a Gala Shrine. They discarded, they sacked the uh, Nykthos actually, because they probably have like triple green spells they're trying to play, like the old growth troll and whatnot. So that Stomping Ground tells us that they have Primeval Titan and Keswick Wolf Run. All right, let's just pass and plane cycle at the end step. Oh, Endurance. That's what that is. I mean, if you want to put that smallpox back in my deck, that'd be fine. Are they going to do it? They're not. Okay. They do not want me to get my smallpox back. Burning Tree Emissary. See, good thing I didn't sorcery speed that Timeless Dragon, otherwise they would have put it on the bottom with Endurance. Ewit's getting back of Ave, a Nykthos, all right. I'm just gonna overload Demonetization here. All right, let's uh, get a, just a basic planes. Oh, okay, that's a pretty good card. Let's just overload this thing. You know what? Maybe just flashing back the dragon is not a bad idea either. But whatever, I already committed. Let's do it. Like, flashing back the dragon, give me a 4-4 blocker. They wouldn't want to swing anyways. But whatever, I'm just doing it. It's the easy choice. If I was a pro playing in a pro tour, maybe I would have done the dragon play instead, knowing that I don't really care about their board, but it's whatever. Four mana, questing beast. All right, let's just hold up Kaya's Guile, I guess, and just make them sack a creature and exile their grave if they play an Ewit. Oh, but now they can hold up like a Veil of Summer if they top decked one. I 
Yeah, they're probably checking our Timeless Dragon, seeing if I can eternalize at instant speed, and they see that I that we can't. So they're still going in, yeah. All right, so Kaya's Guile, sack a creature, and make a spirit. Perfect, it worked. All right, Locked Wayne, now let's get back our dragon. And we got lots of goodies in hand. I, I kind of want to uh, vindicate their stomping ground here because I do not want them to get up to six for the prime time. In Search of Dankness. Seems like a good card. I'll probably just Vanishing Verse that. Yeah, let's just let's just Vanishing Verse that. So they don't scry. Let's blow up their, their stomping grins. Uh, you know what? Probably not. Let's just, let's just save it for like removing a big thing they play potentially. So I can, I can actually uh, do this crime, put target creature from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under my control. So I can get their questing beast here. What does a they, they do? I don't care about that. All right, so let's uh, crime on questing beast. Now we're getting in there and putting them to one. It's looking good. Oh no, do they have an endurance? Do they top deck an endurance? No, you loser. Dang it. I got wrecked. All right, get in there with a the timeless dragon. They are down to six. Two more turns. So that's cool. The endurance works really cool with the Aveve or whatever that oozes. Like burning tree into like a free evoked endurance into that and you get like three oozes. This is pretty cool. So they do have it, I told you. They're getting prime time. Or are they getting like Thrag Tusk or something? Or or what? F Frog Hemoth? What this be? What is this? 4-4 four, four, Trample Haste. When it deals combat to a player, exile like that many cards in their graveyard. Put a plus and plus encounter for each creature exiled. You gain one life for each non-creature exiled. Whoa. Uh, I feel like I'm gonna have to save some damage here, chump. Well, good thing I still got the Vindicate, but Frog Hemoth, though? <laughs> Never expect. I didn't even know this existed. I know I've read this card before, but I forgot it existed. The thing looks like it's out of Star Wars or something. Frog Hemoths are super scary in D&D. Yeah, I, I'd imagine so. Look at them. They look like little aliens from Star Wars. All right, that looks like the guy for the, the, the bad guy from Monsters, Inc. What's his name? The, the Salivander guy? Kind of looks like him if you think about it all right vindicate on frog um oh dude i actually gotta stay back now <laughs> they're they're actually winning the race now i'm just gonna draw with lock blade because their their turns wasted here i i get a free chance to use lock blade and find an answer to this endurance or like find like a lingering souls for blockage or whatever And they found Utopia Sprawl. Abundant Growth. Why? Okay, I think that Abundant Growth is a waste of a slot in that deck. Like, you already got Oath of Nyssa, Arbor Elf, Uto I hope you have Arbor Elf. You got Utopia Sprawl. You should have, like, Ignoble Hierarch, too. Like, I think that in, uh, Abundant Growth just doesn't make the cut. All right, draw a card, lose two. Oh, another Vindicate. That's an answer. Play this backup Erberg. Vindicate on uh, Endurance. Play Liliana. Take up, make you discard your last card, which is a Nykthos. 
and get in there for four. All right, two more turns with Lily on the table. Can we do it? Don't you dare top deck another frog, Hemoth. That card actually seems pretty sick. Trample Haster. Pick up again. Found another Endurance? Jeez. Okay, hold on. In response, in response, let me draw with Lockthwain. And then, oh, that's a good draw. All right, so discard the Timeless Dragon. Play a backup Lily. And uh, minus Make You Sack. Get in there. All right, one more turn. Okay, but also a frog hemoth kills us. A frog, we're in frog hemoth range now. <laughs> Do you have it? Scoop it up, come on, scoop it up. Yay, that was a really cool match. I, I greatly enjoyed that. I, I love playing Mono Green Devotion because of how versatile it is. Like you can play it a million different ways and it can still work. And they just showed another of those million ways, frog hemoth and stuff, like that was cool. See. That's like that's the innovation I like to see in modern. And now that we're part way through the video, if you felt it deserved a like, a comment, or a share, I'd really appreciate it. It helps grow the channel. All right, thank you. Got a game here against Clinch Sam, and we're gonna be on the draw here with some Dragon Pox, and that's gonna be a keep. It's like a fine mid range hand. But Shroom, I know I got obnoxious in chat the other day, but when you talk to me about geography. I'll go off, okay? No holds barred. I will spam you when it comes to geography because that's something that I get excited about. And uh, to answer your question, no, I have not. I have not explored Mexico yet. I I don't know how the geography and nature in Mexico goes, but um, yeah, I love exploring like islands, <coughs> like like because islands have like there's a lot of like cool like volcanic islands and just random pieces of land that are very unique islands can get super unique that's what i love about it but like exploring just like different continents you know like africa and the middle east just like seeing what what nature there is because there's a lot of interesting nature everywhere and i just love to explore it it's just one of my one of my pastimes, one of my big hobbies is just exploring nature around the world and exploring, like seeing what, like learning a little bit about different languages and, you know, what, what, how the city culture goes in, in all around the world. It's just, I'm just a big geography nerd, okay? I can plane cycle here with the Timeless Dragon. All right, let's do it. Get a basic planes. Oh, I drew a land anyways. All right. Uh, I'm just going to go for Lingering Souls and then go for the aggro plan, like flashback the Timeless Dragon. Go in there. Going up against Black White Humans. Um, Dude, Black White Zombies, though, the next... Did you... For those who are watching on YouTube and have not yet seen the Innistrad spoilers, we're getting Champion of the Perished. So this is the Perish, and then we're getting Champion of the Perished, which is going to be the zombie version of Champion of the Perished. It does the exact same thing as this, but for zombies. So that's going to be a new zombie staple for sure. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to play with that. That's going to be sick. All right, they're getting in there for three or for two. I'll be able to blow up that thing eventually. So let's just... Uh, um. I do want to Inquisition them, but they've been playing nothing, so I doubt they have anything. I think I'm just going to flash back the Timeless Dragon and go aggro mode. Dude, the Timeless Dragon actually seems like a decent card. You can plane cycle early on and then just like get it back as a 4-4 flyer for 4 later. Like that kind of feels like a Sphinx of Foresight to me. Or what is it? What is a Sphinx that can cycle for one blue? That's Sphinx of Foresight, right? No, no, no. 
It's a different Sphinx, but you know, you know what I mean? That four drop, four, four flying Sphinx that can cycle for one blue to cantrip. I think that that is an incredibly undervalued, underrated card. Cause like, I think that like in any situation where people play like opt or serum visions or whatever, like, yeah, you can snap cast those back. But I think the versatility of, of that Sphinx is just way better. That they should take those cards places because just the versatility of it being a potential four, four flyer for four later is great. All right, um, do I just slam another dragon? No, I think, I think let's go Kaya and, um, and then exile the champion. And uh, then let's demonetization on the Thalia. Um, let's just keep a chum blocker back. Like they might have a removal spell. So I'm, I'm saving both of these back just for now till I can get this timeless dragon out to protect my Kaya. Oh, Glensleaf Siphoner. I love that card. It's another Bob. Again, another card that doesn't see enough play. It's just another Bob. And, um, I wish King Duelist was in modern. That'd be cool. All right. It's exile. If at least one of those was a creature. So let's save a creature. So exile that and push and we'll we'll save the champion in the grave for next turn. They just, they just scoop it up. They don't like our five card hand. And they scoop the whole round. Dude, I hate when people do that. It's like I'm trying to get content for the video. It's like people don't want to see half games. It's like those kinds of things make me want to just keep the video, keep it in the video. Just out of frustration of the fact that our time was wasted. <laughs> Got a game here against Mocha BZ, who we played against a few times before. We're going to be on the draw here with some Black White Dragon Pox, and that's going to be a mulligan. Uh, this one is better, and let me keep it and throw away... Do I throw away Kaya or Lingering Souls or Grist? I like Grist. I think it's better in most situations than Kaya. Kaya's very situational. I think I'm throwing away Kaya. Blood Crypt. No. No. Okay, DRC. Marsh Fats, crack it for Indotha. Yo, Real Shroom, thank you so much for the 100 Tiggle Biddies. I really appreciate it. Inquisition. Oh, there goes Grist. Or probably Demonetization because it's my only answer at the moment. Yep, they take Demonetization. All right, let's reveal what we drew just because it's a tap land. Crash, thank you for the 100 Tiggle Biddies. Appreciate that as well. It says hype train close, sub gift or use bits now to start a hype train. Four minutes, 17 seconds. Oh, dang. They have lingering souls of their own. All right, well, two can play that game. They have three card types. They can get a Mishra's bobble off the top. They can get there. Lightning Bolt surveils. You have four card types yet? Nope, not yet. And flashes back Lingering Souls surveils. And they do get a Delirium online. All right, let's block one of their spirits. Play Marsh Fats, crack it, get a Gala Shrine, hard cast another Lingering Souls, and pass. And next turn we can go flashback Lingering Souls plus play Grist and Bone Shards the uh, the Dragon Ray Channeler. Young Peasy. Man, they got so much removal. 
I can tell they also have a Sedgemore Witch in there. That seems like a really fun deck. I gotta give that deck a try sometime. All right. Flagstones. Let's go get a Gala Shrine again. Play Grist. Oh, wrong color. Wrong color. No, I don't want to concede. Hold on. Green. Black. Grist. Flashback Souls. Minus and destroy the DRC. I could have probably just played in Flashback of Lingering Souls this turn and just got a bunch of blockers. So next turn, Gris may, might be able to stay alive. Of course, they have Akaya's Guile. They exile my grave. Gris is going to die. They get another thing. Kills Gris and hits us for four. Down a three in Bolt range and in Sedgemore Witch range. Can I get a Demonetization? Nope, clean to dust though is not terrible. But let's just play in Flashback Lingering Souls because it gives us the most blockage. Now the question is, do I want to exile a creature to gain three life to get out of bolt range or do I want to just draw a card? Dude, stop it with the removal. They've drawn so much. They've, oh, and Unholy Heat. They've Unholy Heat, Kaya's Guile, double push, double bolted. Are you kidding me? Oh, and I'm exact, he's dead, cool. Wow, that was a nutty draw from the opponent. That was like perfect. Couldn't have gotten any more perfect than that. All right, well, onto the board. Give us a, uh, for sure, Chalice of the Void. That seems pretty great. Punishment's not bad as a sweeper. Kaya's Guile can gain four, make up surprise blocking spirit. I guess that's not the worst either. Core Firewalker seems decent too. Oh no, they can kill it with push. Yo, what happened? Yo, Jason, Jason of Guam. Thank you so much for the tier two. That's a tier two sub and we started a hype train. Yo, you got the hype train badge now. Welcome, welcome, enjoy the emails. Thank you so much. All right, we are going to cut. Do I cut Thoughtseize? It's just a little too painful here. All right. Uh, smallpox feels kind of bad, seeing as how they can make a bunch of tokens, but it could be good early game. Um, what do I not like here? Liliana is probably not that impactful in this matchup because they're going to have tokens and sackables and lingering souls. All right. I guess we go like that for now. What else would I want? And then that's good. All right. We won the dot or where we didn't win the die roll, but you get it. Um, yeah, I'll keep this. That's fine. It's got Inquisition. It's got the plane cycling thing. Given we do have a tap land, but can make it work. Oh, man. All right. Well, I'm going to Inquisition. I'm not going to kill that yet, even though they can get surveil value. I just got to make sure and kill everything. Oh, they got thought seas of their own. You know what? I'm really kind of tempted to not take the young pyro just so that they don't thought seize me next turn. Because if they take my timeless dragon, I'm screwed, right? Oh. The right thing to do is take the young pyro. I hate it, but it has to happen. Oh, wait, no, 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 Prismatic Ending for one. No, I'm stupid. The Prismatic Ending can do it. Oh, I'm dumb. And there's a Thoughtseize. They might take my Prismatic Ending now. Um, 
Yo, we reached the level two hype train, 6%, because Crash gifted a sub to Gurumeshi. Thank you so much, Crash. I appreciate it. Thank you for continuing the hype train. Really appreciate. Yeah, and they're taking push now because I screwed up and didn't exile that thing. Yeah, that's a that's a shame. Like I ought to just scoop right. I ought to just shame scoop right now. Yeah. All right. Well, cycle. Let's get a Gala Shrine. Pass turn. And we'll just cling to dust on a spell and uh, draw a card. Uh, if it was a creature, you gain three, otherwise you draw a card. So let's hit their land, because they don't have a land engrave. All right, I draw an Inquisition. They're probably going to take Micaiah's Guile. Thank you, Crash. Glad you enjoy it here. Bolts our face just to try to get Delirium, and they do. Miss my land drop again. I think I'm just gonna plain cycle and inquisition them here. Oh yeah, that's right, it's a Bedlam Reveler. I'll take another hit. But a constant flow of 4-4 four, four dragons is gonna be pretty good here. And another bolt to the face, so I'm going down to five. They need a second red source and they can play their Bedlam Reveler and start the value train. Oh, Chalice on one looks so appealing, but let's just get out uh, this thing as they proceed to top deck a Fatal Push. So let's go. I feel like if I were them, I would, I would probably play Sedgemore Witch over Bedlam Reveler. I mean, Bedlam Reveler can't deny it. It's really good, but like... Sedgemore Witch like fits their plan, like their pyro plan, like really good. Gonna drain and gain. Do they discard Bedlam Reveler? They discard Bloodstain Mire. Wait, what happened to their Bedlam Reveler? They discarded that? Well, I guess I'm forced to chump. Um. I guess we're flashing back a Timeless Dragon. Actually, you know what? It's probably safer to just go play and flashback Lingering Souls. Because if they find a push off the top, then, you know, get around it. I also have to flashback this Cling to Dust pretty soon and gain three life because I'm currently in Bolt range and in Dragon Race Chandler range. So I have to make sure I can deal with it. Thoughts. Oh, that was a perfectly timed Thoughtseize. Just take my chalice. That was going to shut down any future bolts. I was hoping to get that off. You know, maybe I should have actually just chalice on one and then played Lingering Souls. I should have done that. I'm making so many misplays. Does that first strike? No. All right, cool. So it's gone. They are empty handed. Okay. I think my number one priority here is uh, Cling to Dust on Dragon Race Channeler because I cannot afford to like risk getting bolted. All right, let's ditch uh, Prismatic Ending Inquisition push. I have to exile five.
stay back. No rush to swing. Just be extra safe. Oh, dude, I was even considering smallpoxing. That would have been perfect. That's so sucky. Oh, that's so sucky. All right. Go to combat, attack Liliana. And then if they minus make me sack my spirit, I can kill Liliana the next turn. But knowing them, they're going to top deck a removal spell for the spirit and then make me sack my timeless dragon. I know it's going to happen. Yep, there it is. You're going to make me ditch my Kaya's Guile. Yeah, that's... Man, they're top decking so well after my misplay. All right, um... Let's just do this now. Exile each opponent's graveyard and create a 1-1. One, one. They drew a land. They make me sack a spirit. And kill Liliana. Now, the game is neutral. We're at a decently healthy six life. We're both in top deck mode. I got a spirit, they got nothing. All right, come on. Top deck war. Okay, that's a fine draw. Beautiful top deck. Kaya is going to absolutely blast them. Like, Kaya's ult just wins. So they gotta find an answer for Kaya in two turns. That ain't it. Take up Kaya. Do I have any creatures? No. Go to combat, swing for one. No, I'm literally staying back. Cause Kaya, if Kaya doesn't take damage here, I win the game. I'm literally staying back just to ult Kaya safely. Yep, and they don't have it. And Kaya blasts them and they scoop it up. Wow. That was an ugly game to look at, but we managed to get it. All right, we're gonna submit it right back. This is fine. Everything's fine. What's an otter pop? Never heard of an otter pop, but all right, Juno, have fun. Thank you, Crash, for another hundred tickle bitties. Kind of want their deck list. Um, well, it's pretty easy to understand what their deck list is. Just Dragon Rage Chandler, Young Pyromancer, Bolt Push, Lingering Souls, Liliana, Bedlam Reveler, Unholy Heat. Mishra's Bobble, probably, but we didn't see any Mishra's Bobbles yet. That is the raw. That should have been an Urborg. Um, I can just play a tap land and then Inquisition them. I'm going to keep this. It's like not mullable, but it's just like I wish this was an Urborg. It would have been so much better if this was an Urborg. It's like syrup in a plastic tube that you freeze and get a popsicle. So it's it's a syrup popsicle. That's an otter pop. I think they sound familiar. Like I'm pretty sure that I've, I think I've seen a freezer of otter pops before. Kind of rings a bell. They might've been other pops, but they might've been otter pops. Young Peasy. Dude, I can... <sighs> you know, I'd hate to say it, but it's probably in my best interest to uh, to smallpox right now. 
It's not good value for me, but I cannot let this lingering soul, this this young pyromancer, get a token and ruin my smallpox later. So let's discard lingering souls, and I think we're going to sack the uh, the Godless shrine. They also discard a Lingering Souls. And I have my own Lingering Souls. All right, Battle of the Spirits. But they have two cards in hand, I got four. No, I hate Dotsie so much. I take my Kaya. They got a mountain and nothing. They trading? They are trading. I will accept this if possible. I feel like they're gonna do something to eat my. Nope, they're just trading. Ooh, a timeless Derg. I like it. All right, get Indotha. Uh, I'm just gonna cycle here. Get a Gala Shrine. And next turn I can flash that dragon back. I was thinking of Kaya's Guiling and exiling their grave and then getting a spirit. But I'll save it as a removal spell. All right, they're going to make a thing and draw two cards. Flashback the dragon. But I do want to exile their graveyard so that it doesn't make their Bedlam Reveler any cheaper. And take away their delirium potential. Dude, Ashiok was a good draw. So to entwine it, I gotta pay six mana. I'm kinda tempted to wait and do all, all the modes. I'm gonna get greedy and I'm gonna do all the modes. Let's let's kill Ashiok. Let's hold it up just in case. Young Pyro. DRC. I need a demonetization off the top, come on. Didn't get it. All right, um, Urborg. All right, let's do all the modes. Might have heard my phone. Took the delirium away from Dragon Race Channeler. All right, let's get in with the Timeless Dragon. We're racing. It is race time. They're at nine. Two more hits and they die. All right, come on, we can get there. They're not gonna wanna swing with Young Pyro and DRC in the face of my spirit token, so that's good. Oh, never mind. They got a bolt. All right. So they're all oh, they're racing. We're off to the races, boys. This is like some serious math time right now. So they can hit us for five down to 13. Then I hit them for four down to five. And then they hit me for six down to seven. I hit them for four down to one and they hit me for six down to one and then I kill them. This is so scary because they can have so much potential damage. Okay, that was a good draw. I think let's exile the young Pyromancer.
Do I dare draw a card with Lockthwain? Do I dare? I don't think- I don't know if I should. It's a little dangerous. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I'm not- I'm not gonna draw a card. It's a little- it's a little sketchy. Alright, one more hit! One more hit! One more hit! Don't find it. They found a land. Oh, they, I feel like they're sandbagging so dang hard. Like, they wanted me to commit like this just for it all to come down. Like, when I let my guard down, I feel like they're going to answer it. Oh, they didn't have it. Oh, the timeless dragon. Yes. They had Lingering Souls and Kaya's Guile, but they had no white mana. Oh, I feel for you. I've been mana screwed many a time. All right, that was not a pretty round at all for either of us, but it is what it is. GG. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the speed up session for today's video. As you know, we like to speed up the longest games in the video to make sure it's not way longer than it should be. And as I always say, if you want to catch the full games unsped up, unedited, and uncut from the video, you can go to the Twitch link down below in the description and check out the entire VOD there from last Saturday. Or you can come out on a future Saturday if you want to catch the gameplay live before it goes up on YouTube. And you can even play against me if you'd like. I welcome that as well. So I actually just recorded the speed up session a second ago and realized that I forgot to hit record. So awesome. Anyways, um, I apologize this this video didn't have five games. Like usually I have like five game minimum in videos. And uh, even one of the games in today's video was like a half match. But it's just, I, I, you know, all the games are just super long. I can't control that. It is what it is. I wasn't going to stream an extra two hours just because all the games are going super long. It's just, it's a very grindy deck. It's smallpox. It's attrition-y. The games are going to go long and slow. It's it's not aggro by any means. And it only has, what, two win conditions? Three, maybe, if you count Kaya. So, yeah, the games are going to be slow. Um, So there's only four. There's only one game in the speed of session, and this is the one because it was extremely long. It was about... A 36, 37 minute game. And we're going up against a uh, viewer. They are playing a mono white control deck. And um, I really like their build. And they were also playing Timeless Dragon. Our mind was blown. Like, I, not only did I see two Timeless Dragon decks in the 5 0 leagues in the past week, but then we queue up a Timeless Dragon deck and then we go up against an opposing Timeless Dragon deck. Like this card is getting around. People are starting to realize the Timeless Dragon is a real card. It's it's super good. And I feel like if like I'm totally going to play Timeless Dragon again next week because I want to play more with this card because I've been really impressed with it. And it might be something like your opponent's deck. Because, like, I feel like the, the next best thing to put Timeless Dragon in is probably got to be Mono White Control. Because what other deck would want a resilient, you know, creature that also fetches you planes? It's got to be Mono White Control. And, um, yeah, they, they had a just... They were just playing like random planeswalkers and ramp in and just casting removal spells and whatnot. So it was just what you expect of a big white mid-range deck. They brought in rest in peace to try to stop us from flashing back timeless dragon and lingering souls, but that also shuts down their own lingering souls. And they got we got got there. Our Liliana got countered by a uh, a mana tithe, and then they ended up getting us again with a mana tithe later. And I end up killing the rip because I do have a Lingering Souls that I want to play in flashback, but then they have a second one. So this Lingering Souls, whether I like it or not, is going to get exiled. They play a Gideon, which is kind of a problem, but thank goodness I top deck a second copy of Vindicate to kill the Gideon. But they're really not pressuring us. They're not finding a win condition. I assume their win conditions are all six mana like Elspeth and stuff. And uh, I get down this Kaya, and they do not find an answer to this Kaya on time. So all this Kaya has to do is take up to six, ult, keep taking up ult again like i dome them for like 14 here or whatever with kaya and gain a bunch of life and go back up to 21 and then i end up finding a liliana so i have liliana and kaya going while they have zero answers and then it's just a matter of time before i take up kaya to five again and ult it because they didn't find an answer so that was a, a really good long grindy game and uh thanks to this viewer for playing against me awesome deck we might play something like it next week and with that let's go on to the wrap up Hope you enjoyed. All right, let's talk about some Abzan, technically Abzan, uh, Dragon Pox for Modern. 
trying out Timeless Dragon. And I gotta say, Timeless Dragon is now on the radar. It is on my radar. It is on a lot of people's radars. Like we, like I, before today, before this week, before these past two days, I've never even heard of anybody playing or even considering Timeless Dragon. Suddenly in this league, I saw two different lists in the 5-0 leagues with Timeless Dragon. One was Abzan, one was this. And then one of the people we went up against today was playing Timeless Dragon. And it's just like, it's so amazing. I am, I love the fact that it's the next lingering souls to pair with like discard effects like Liliana and Collective Brutality. I know you've heard me say that a million times throughout the video, but it's true. And I just want to stress that. I want to emphasize that because that is some potential for new black white control decks. So I'm definitely going to try Timeless Dragon again. 9 out of 10, really, really solid card. Being able to just like cycle it, hit your land drop, and not to mention it it cycles for a dual land as well. It doesn't cycle just for a basic planes. It can get anything that is partly planes, like you can get a, a shock land or a tri a triome land as well. So it really helps with fixing and just like hitting your land for sure. So you can get away with like playing 23 lands maybe, which this deck is playing 23 lands, which I wouldn't recommend in a small pox deck because if you don't have your flag zones and you're sacking a legit land and discarding a card, then you're in some trouble. So I'd probably go 24 if I was playing a small pox deck. Can't go wrong though with just black white control. Cling to dust. I like I always thought this card was total trash and I read it a million times, but I somehow always never read the part that says otherwise you draw a card. I literally thought that it was just exile a card from a graveyard. If it's a creature, you gain three. I never read that last part of it. Otherwise you draw a card. Now I actually see why people play this card because I never understood. So yeah, pretty solid card, but it always is just filler, so I can see doing without it. Splashing for the Grist was a little cute. I don't really agree with that too much, even though it is a solid card and you can easily splash for it. Um, Kaya is always out exceeds my expectations. It always feels pretty good. And especially when you're putting a lot of permanence in your opponent's graveyard with smallpox and then exiling it with Kaya feels great. Um, yeah, these it's cool how Souls and Timeless Dragon were enough of a win condition on their own. So yeah. Uh, I don't think I really have much else to say about this deck. Smallpox is always pretty average. It's never anything too special. I know people love it, but to me personally, it's always just average. There's there's not, it's not too exciting. But yeah, Thomas Dragons in Focus, definitely trying this card out in the future, and I encourage you to try it out as well. It's a new hot pick at the moment, so give it a try. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, be sure to hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. And a huge thanks to our Patreon supporters for making this channel possible. Their names are scrolling on screen. And if you would like to help monetize this channel as well, you can find the Patreon link down below. And we now do Commander streams with our patrons every Tuesday. And if you need to pick up some magic cards, TCGplayer.com's got you covered. You can find them through our deck list link down below and anything you purchase through that link really helps out the channel. And if you want to play some magic online, you should sign up with Mana Traders using the code that's listed in the description to save 15% and you can rent and play all the magic decks you want. It is what I personally use to make my videos. And of course, all the links are down below in the description. Again, thank you so much for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one.